Joining me now with more is Julie Wernow. She's a health and medicine reporter for the Wall Street Journal. Julie, welcome. Thanks very much for being with us. So Omicron is now the dominant COVID strain in the U.S. There are some 40 million Americans who are not vaccinated and at present do not seem inclined to change that. But what are some potential scenarios for how this variant plays out? Right. I think that um, something that people have gotten to accustomed to hearing throughout this pandemic is, you know, we don't know yet. There's not enough data. Um, but we, we do have uh, the UK to look to and South Africa with this variant. And we have a lot of smart people who are trying to figure out how that's going to play out in the United States. So uh, one scenario is that, um, as you see, this is a very virulent strain. Um, it kind of is sweeping across the US very quickly. Um, and we end up in a situation where uh, the hospitals become overwhelmed. Um, in part, that's because of the large number of unvaccinated individuals um, in the United States. Uh, another possibility is that uh, this actually could produce slightly milder symptoms um, and that uh, that is helpful in some way to what we're experiencing at the hospitals. Unfortunately, just because there's so many cases and it comes on so fast and the hospitals have already been dealing with staffing issues for a variety of reasons, um, the most likely scenario appears to be that we're going to have um, another situation in which we have uh, a lot of overwhelmed hospitals in the United States. So the White House says it is going to make 500 million rapid at-home COVID tests available for free. People have been struggling to get their hands on them, especially as Omicron spreads. Why have tests been so difficult to come by in some places? Right, it's, it's, it's a lot of people are coming at this now going, we're at this point in the pandemic, how could we possibly be, how could it be so hard for me to get a test? Or how could it be so hard for me to get my results back? Um, there's a couple of things that are happening here. Uh, one is there's kind of this perfect storm in which the, uh, this Omicron variant is showing up at a time when we've actually shut down a lot of these mass testing sites and they were no longer operating. You know, things were looking good. Um, the variant came on so quickly that uh, getting those testing sites back up and running again has been a little bit of a chore, especially with the staffing shortages that we're dealing with. At the pharmacies, anyone who's sort of tr tried to show up at a pharmacy uh, to get tested, they're having similar issues, uh, just, just getting enough workers on the ground. People are tired at this point in the pandemic and the, the burnout is affecting every part of the employment sector, especially healthcare. Well, a new report from the Imperial College of London finds the risk of reinfection from the Omicron variant is over five times greater. And another uh, massive new study shows four in 10 infected with COVID are asymptomatic. What might that tell us about natural immunity and the virus's ability to spread undetected? Yeah, this virus seems to have a, do a better job from what we know so far of evading natural, pure natural immunity. Um, people who have been vaccinated and also were infected uh, with COVID seem to be faring a little bit better as are people who have gotten a booster shot. But if, if you were sort of walking around um, in COVID before this thinking, well, I already got COVID and so I don't need to worry and I don't need to get vaccinated. Uh, this, is a, this is not Delta or Alpha. This is a very different variant and it seems to know how to, to evade that kind of natural immunity from earlier infection. And Julie, states including Ohio and Massachusetts have activated National Guard members to work in hospitals as they fill up again because of COVID. Tell us what exactly um, do these National Guard members do? Yeah, when you see these sort of eye-popping numbers about the National Guard showing up, um, that's not to say that every one of those um, Guardsmen and women are um, doctors or nurses or filling in uh, in healthcare roles. Some of them are helping with, uh, you know, traffic control or uh, the testing sites or vaccination clinics, as they have been, you know, throughout the pandemic. Uh, there are definitely some very acute healthcare worker shortages, and there are trained guardsmen and women who are healthcare workers essentially and are now filling in at some of these hospitals where, you know, we're seeing things like protests across the country because of working conditions. One thing that, um, you know, Americans need to remember is that in some parts of this country, these healthcare workers really haven't gotten a break at all. Um, 
you know, they, they were working very hard all through the Delta variant in, in parts of the country where the vaccination rates are very low. Um, the death rates in some states are pretty um, alarmingly high when you look at it from the beginning of the pandemic. And those healthcare workers have all, you know, experienced each of those deaths. And so we're seeing a lot of uh, turnover, people sort of leaving the profession, and that's uh, all happening at the same time that we have this incredibly virulent strain of the virus showing up. Yeah, just a myriad of factors here coming together, but it's it's an excellent point, really the burnout that these frontline healthcare workers have been um, experiencing um, is just endless. Uh, Julie Warnow, Julie, thanks very much for being with us. Thanks for having me.